Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Thursday, November the 5th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the world. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. O Lord, all my longing is before you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me, and the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions stand aloof from my plague, and my nearest kin stand far off. Those who seek my life lay their snares, those who seek my hurt speak of ruin, and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like a deaf man, I do not hear, like a mute man who does not open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth are no rebukes. But for you, O Lord, do I wait. It is you, O Lord my God, who will answer. For I said, only let them not rejoice over me, who boast against me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall, my pain is ever before me. I confess my iniquity, I am sorry for my sin. But my foes are vigorous, they are mighty, and many are those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good accuse me because I follow after good. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Matthew chapter 23. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so practice and observe whatever they tell you, but not what they do. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues, greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. In devotion with Martin Luther today is... From John 3.19 This is why people are condemned. The light came into the world, yet people loved the dark rather than the light, because their actions were asking for forgiveness. Suppose you're a homeowner and something in your home is damaged. You become angry about it, but soon discover that no one did it. Even though nobody admits to it, the damages remain and it bothers you. Every so often, a servant is caught in the act of damaging property, but still denies doing it. If the servant would only confess, the master could easily forgive him. The devil and death have brought no one into the world. People today are so bad, evil, and full of sin that they place their own guilt on other people's shoulders. If they would only admit their sin, they could be forgiven and would find that God is merciful. God wouldn't deny us anything if we could only crawl to his cross, but we don't do it. And in the process, we pile seven other sins on top of one sin. Yes, we multiply our sins to no end and beyond all measure. The devil does the same. He denies everything and makes many sins out of one sin. If a child were to say, Oh, Father, I have done wrong, forgive me, he would be forgiven. But the child stubbornly says no and refuses to admit any wrongdoing. He adds a lie to the sin and to the damage he has already caused. Once again, more sins spring from the first sin. On the other hand, if he were to confess the sin and say, I have done it, he would remain in the light and would be like an angel. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, and let all your faithful people ever be found in the Apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another, the glory of your holy name, here in time and hereafter in eternity, for you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Merciful and gracious Lord, you cause your word to be proclaimed in every generation. Stir up our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may receive this proclamation with humility and finally be exalted at the coming of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our shorter Luther reading tonight is... From Jeremiah 23, 5, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And also Deuteronomy 18, 5, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Two Ministries of the Word we have these two ministries of the word which are necessary for the salvation of the human race, the ministry of the law and the ministry of the gospel, one for death and the other for life. They are indeed alike if you are looking at their authority, but most unlike if you are thinking about their fruit. The ministry of Moses is temporary, finally to be ended by the coming of the ministry of Christ, as he says here, heed him. But the ministry of Christ will be ended by nothing else since it brings eternal righteousness and puts an end to sin as it is said in Daniel 9.24. And we close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.